So now we're going to talk about absolute value equations. So let's say we have the absolute value of x equals 13. Well, x could be 13, right? No problem. Because if you take, if you take the absolute value of 13, it equals 13. But x could also be a negative 13. Because if you take the absolute value of negative 13, you also get 13. So you get two solutions here. 13 is one solution, and negative 13 is another solution. Now when we do absolute value, unless it's equaling 0, we always have to consider the positive case and the negative case. All right? Um, and if it's, I think I had on the exam the absolute value something um, equaling negative 7, but that's not possible. There's no solution. You're not going to get the absolute value to equal a negative number. Okay. So what if you have the, a, a more complicated one? What if you have the absolute value of 2x plus 3 equals 13? Well, then you're going to take whatever's in the absolute value and you're going to say, hey, that could equal 13. Oh, it's supposed to be a 3. Or whatever's in the absolute value equals negative 13. And then you solve each of those. I thought we did this already, but let's just do it again. I teach too many algebra classes. I get them mixed up. So I get negative 8 in that case. Um, and in this case, I get 5. So I get two solutions here. Pretty sure we did have a question like this on the exam. Um, but that's how you solve them. So just good review, right? Okay.